Hi, I'm Jay Fadd, and thanks so much for joining us today on This is the Day. And Father Reed, today we have guests from Idaho, and a face that will be very familiar to people who watch Catholic TV. Yes, in Idaho, Capstone Missions works with the poorest of the poor in Tijuana. We're going to be speaking with them. And our good friend, Father Leo Padalinghug, is here, and this is his cookbook, Recipes for Family Life. It's going to be a blast. All that and much more right now on This is the Day. I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This is a Day, joined by my good friends, Kevin Nelson and Father Reed. How are you today? I'm doing very, very well. I have this funny feeling that uh, summer vacation is coming. Do you know why? Why? Because you get a little... No. Do you know what well, happened? I feel really bad about this. I jumped in the shower very early this morning. It was about quarter of five this mm -hmm. morning. And I had the razor. I'm ready to shave. I was so tired. I thought I shaved. I Got out, got dressed, got in the car, driving in. I went like this. I said, you got to be kidding me. Were you still holding the razor? No, I wasn't, <laughs> but it's just a shock that I... It, it, it just, just too tired Oh, just let morning. it go. You're going you're gonna to grow a beard anyways. The I summer, will, yeah, but that? vacation's a while off. Hey, yeah. I have to tell you something very special that happened yesterday. Oh. And I know this happened to you recently, too. Sure. We're doing a project about priests here at Catholic TV. Mm. And I went out yesterday, and I interviewed Father Mahoney, Father Ronan, and Father Conley. Three wonderful guys, all with just fantastic, wonderful stories, so welcoming to Catholic TV, to myself and Richard, who went out to do that shoot. I was so impressed by their stories. Mm -hmm. I'm excited just to edit this piece with you. You and I are mm -hmm. actually going to work on the piece together. To put it together, these guys have been fantastic. And I think they're, they're honored you know, to be asked to, and, and I would be as well, because this is the year for priests, and uh, the, uh, the Holy Father has asked us to honor priests and the gift of the priesthood to the church and so to hear some of these guys speak about their ministry their experiences their life and the people that they've served is really really amazing well it's a lot of them the three that i interviewed and i know that you had monsignor carlson earlier this mm -hmm. week but the three that i spoke to really spoke about what the people mean to them mm -hmm. talking about how important it is for them and their priesthood for that affirmation and support from the people and also sharing the faith and praying as a community. And I was a little bit surprised by that, just how open and honest they were. I'm not surprised that the people mean so much to priests, sure, yeah. but just, it was heartfelt. These, this was heartfelt stuff. So it was, it, it's a great project and I thank the Cardinal for allowing us, you and I, and the people here at Catholic TV to do it. Yeah. It's a great thing. It's a great way to honor priests uh, during this year for priests. And so. And we have to say to our friends yep. in Canada, happy Bastille Day. That's right. Today is Bastille mm -hmm. Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you always have to get a song mm -hmm. in, don't you? Always have to get the song yes. in. A song and a riddle, that's what I say. Well, we do have a riddle. We have our Catholic treasure. What's the riddle today? Well, the riddle uh, is like this. I'm going to read it to you. We're going to put it up on the screen, give you something to think about for the next 25 minutes or so. The riddle today goes like this. Its walls are not like any other, but within a process of discovery, the call that's felt is proven true to prepare for the grace of ministry. <laughs> and I'm looking at Father Leo, who's sitting off set, and he's perplexed. I know what it is. I do know what it is, but I am so used now to your riddles that I can decipher them. I just can just, I should have been, you know, in the military that they tried to decipher the codes and mm -hmm. things. I could do that. Yeah. I, I probably Maybe that'll do be that. your next job <laughs> after general manager. Well, I, I don't think so. There's a lot of deciphering that needs to go on around here. Anyway. Well, joining us on the phone right now is a great group, Capstone Missions with Rusty, Debbie, and Carol. Hey, guys, how you doing in Idaho? We're doing fine, thanks. How are you? Good. We have some great pictures of you right now so we know exactly what you look like. You're a good-looking group. Well, thanks, and thanks for having us back on your show. Sure. Rusty, tell us about your recent trip and, and what was accomplished. Well, we, um, Capstone Missions makes a 
about four to five trips a year to uh, Tijuana to support orphanages, orphans, and other poor folks down there. Our uh, latest trip, which was the third one this year, was uh, at, toward the end of May. Uh, we went down there for a week, uh, as we always do. We leave on a Saturday and return on a Saturday. This was kind of a small group. We went in just two vehicles and with nine people, <clears throat> one of which is a professional construction guy who uh, guides all the uh, construction work that we do down there. In this case, uh, in fact, in the last three trips, we have concentrated on an orphanage uh, which has about 85 kids in it right now. Uh, I don't have many caretakers there, and it's a, it's a big, huge place that, frankly, uh, needs a lot of organization. So uh, in, in, these, in these past three trips, what we have concentrated on is building shelves, 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 shelves. Uh, we've built a zillion of them so they can uh, stack their, uh, their books and their shoes and their clothes and that sort of thing. And it's starting to get a little bit more organized uh, since we've been down there for these last three trips. Rusty, Debbie Carroll, Father Reed here, and uh, thanks again for being with us. It's great to have you back. Uh, Debbie, are there, are there plans for any future trips? Yes, our next trip is October 17th to the 24th. We kind of take the summer off because it's hot and all of the kids are out of school, so it makes it a little more challenging to work. Uh, but that trip, uh, the 17th to the 24th, is our last trip for this year, and then next year we will have four, possibly five trips. Why do you guys, and I throw this out to all three of you, whoever wants to, you could fight over who answers this question. Why do you guys do this? This is Carol. Um, it's always an honor to serve the least among us, and it's just a blessing for us to, to help and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And there's just such great need everywhere you turn. And they just give so much more back than we can ever offer them. Now, uh, Capstone Missions, I'm sure, has a website. I, I know that people in our uh, television audience would love to, to find out more and perhaps even help you. Is there a way that they can do that, find out more? Absolutely. Capstone is on the web at capstonemissions.org. We're also on Facebook, and we also have a blog, capstonemissionsblogspot.com, and you can keep up with what we're doing. And if there is one thing that is a misconception about the people of Tijuana or with people really who don't have the financial means that many of us do, what would it be? Uh, did, did you say misconception? Yes. In, um, yeah, what would be the misconception, the Rusty? Well, one of the things that we find uh, when we take um, college kids with us, which we try to do on almost all of our trips, in fact, we schedule the trips around the breaks of the three major colleges in Idaho, uh, we find that, that those folks, it's almost a life-changing experience uh, for them to go down to, to, see, uh, to see how, the, how poor folks in an almost third-world situation live compared to how, how they live uh, up here in Idaho. And, um, you know, we, they come back uh, from that trip just, uh, just with their eyes wide open and, and so, so amazed at, uh, at what we have and what we take for granted in this country that most people, that most people around the world, frankly, uh, just can't even imagine. Mm. Well, Rusty, Debbie, and Carol, thank you for being on This Is A Day. And keep up the great work. It's, it's really necessary in today's world. Well, thanks for having us, and uh, glad to talk to you again. Thank, thank you. you. All right, take care. God bless. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Colby, and this is Lifelines. Who's missing? Sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, priests and religious, friends we'll never have, soulmates we'll never know, people who would have discovered the cure for cancer and AIDS, peacemakers who could have averted the war in Iraq. What you're saying? Well, since abortion was legalized in 1973, it's taken over 50 million lives. The enormity of this number is beyond most people's comprehension. In case that includes you, let's give it some perspective. 50 million people has been estimated to equal the combined population of 18 states. Arizona, Arkansas, Colorado, Idaho, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, 
Minnesota, Montana, Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, New Mexico, North and South Dakota, Oklahoma, Utah, and Wyoming. In fact, abortion has caused the death of more people than all the Americans killed in all the wars this country has ever fought. The scourge of abortion is frequently referred to as a holocaust, a term most commonly used to describe Adolf Hitler's final solution that killed six million Jews, a number which pales in comparison to the 50 million babies killed by abortion. And the most incredible part is that abortion continues to be legal because we continue to elect politicians who think it's okay. Isn't it time that we put a stop to abortion? And we can, for our sake and for the sake of the whole world. As Blessed Mother Teresa told the Wall Street Journal in 1994, human rights are not a privilege conferred by government. They are every human being's entitlement by virtue of his humanity. The right to life does not depend and must not be declared to be contingent on the pleasure of anyone else, not even a parent or a sovereign. Thank you for listening, and God bless. here on Catholic TV. Talking about smiling face, Father Leo now joins us. And Father, we are giving you a workout today. You had the mass a little bit earlier. We have you on This Is The Day. Yeah, We're the workout's do necessary because, I mean, if I'm going to be eating all this food, you know, you got to work Good out point. somehow. Well, I have to ask you now. <laughs> we'll talk about the, you have a great book out. Thanks. We'll talk about the food. But you have to tell me a little bit about the karate. <laughs> because now I'm a little nervous sitting this close because if I ask yeah. the wrong question, I don't know what's going to happen. No, I mean, I just think... Uh, the black belt. I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, which is a Korean martial art. And Father Reed said the Korean stick fighting, but I'm a, <laughs> also a black okay, belt in, in Filipino stick fighting called Arnis. And that's what I did before I entered the priesthood. And so I would tell people at conferences, you know, I was a break dancer, I'm a black belt, and so the next logical step is priesthood, right? Yeah. And so, no, I like black. It's slimming. That's why I just wanted to wear it all did over. Did you break dancing too? Oh my gosh. I had. I'm a typical person, you know, I'm just a, a product of the 80s, and that's just what we did. I, I'm a product of the, well, I don't know, actually. I'm <laughs> Go ahead. The, yeah, I'm before the 80s. <laughs> I'll forget that then. I guess they did. But, you know, with this ministry uh, for Grace Before Meals, the food ministry, I found that people need to have connections in the martial arts and the break dancing. There are at least some way a connection to young people and, and you put it in God's hand and so what I do is I do something called spiritual combat and I talk about the spiritual warfare and I use some of the techniques from martial arts and I apply it to the spiritual life and people can now pray in a, in a different way. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to be uh, you know obviously cooking and talking about food later on today. We're doing sure. some pieces with you but the book, this great book of recipes, Grace Before Meals, what is the reason that you came up with this book. What is the fundamental reason? The fundamental reason is simple. It's Christian. It's we need to come around the table as a family and we need to take time for that. And so the subliminal message is if we're not going to take time for our families around the dinner table, then we're not going to spend time with God as a universal family around the altar. And so the purpose is to strengthen relationships around the dinner table. What's in the book? Tell us about that. The book is a, a compilation of essays, questions to engage family conversation, and even recipes and some prayers. And what I do is I go through a, a, a year and I take some liturgical celebrations, but I also take events of life and I kind of put them together. I write a bite-sizable theological essay followed by some questions for engaging family conversations, suggested or proposed recipes, and, and I make sure that people spend time with God in prayer. and they. They make sure that they leave room for God at, at their table because he leaves room for us at his. Mm -hmm. And you have a fun website, and I believe it Thanks. is gracebeforemeals.com. That's correct. And people can find out where they can get the book there, and they can also learn a little bit more about you. Yeah, and a lot of fun is that, that this, we're now in our second edition of printing. It is all self-published, and then just recently, um, 
uh, I got contacted from Random House and Doubleday Books, and they want to actually take over and be publishers for this book, too. And that comes at a great time because we're writing the next follow-up, which is called Spicing Up Married Life, <laughs> which is specifically for couples to have date nights together. I'm going to need that book. Is that right? Can you get it out even quicker? Everybody <laughs> needs can, it. Can you get it out now, maybe? <laughs> so, we have, so we have a karate, breakdancing, cooking priest. How did it all get started? How did you... How'd you get involved with cooking? Yeah, let's see. Uh, the cooking is because I like to eat. I mean, it's just in my family being Filipino and living in America for most of my life, I think the only reason why I had friends is because my mother could really cook, you know? And, and naturally, you see the power of what food can do. It brings people together. And ultimately, food is religious from the Latin term religere, which means to bind. And if you want to know what keeps a family together, it's prayer. But really, how often do families even pray together? I want them to pray daily, grace before meals together. And there they can also talk and just learn. So cooking has been always with my family. And then when I studied at the North American College, you know, the people who live there in Italy, they, I mean, Italians basically, every other conversation is about food. <laughs> so that's what I do is I, I, I kind of learn about what, what families can learn from each other around the meal. and. Um, and in Italy, it's where I learned that the power of food turned seminary and friends into priestly brothers mm. because of the food we eat every day. And I'm speaking specifically of the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. You know, we have one thing in common, at least. Actually, we have many things, but we're both many alumni things. of the North American College. Ad multos anos, glorios Ad multos anos, exactly. And, uh, but I would like people to know that uh, aside from being a parish priest and a cook and black belt and all that, you also are on the faculty of Mount St. Mary's Seminary. Can you tell us about your experience working with the seminary? Yeah, it's a real pleasure. It's the second oldest seminary, the second largest. We were founded by St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, tucked away just 20 miles south of Gettysburg. And guys from all over the country come to be formed, uh, you know, to be men of God, to be pastors. And my job is specifically as the director of pastoral field education, pastoral formation. And I know that a lot of people know me as the shtick priest who likes to cook and who can break dance, but more importantly, it's about teaching men who are going to be future pastors how to feed God's flock. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I do. You said you're close to Gettysburg? Very close to Does Gettysburg. Does that mean you have a Gettysburg address? Oh, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> I apologize for that. Can I just apologize for that right now? <laughs> Is that... I bet you he reenacts too, doesn't he? Yeah. He dress up like the Civil War bus. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> but it's, um, you know, it's amazing that you would go from, you're, you're in the North American, you like to cook, you learn how to cook. Well, how do you progress from that to doing the TV stuff? Okay, the, uh, I think the short answer is, on the day of my ordination, I just celebrated 10 years, I told God, take everything, everything from me, sins, talents, gifts, weakness, brokenness. And I said, I'm going to put it in your hands and you do what you want with it. And I think like the insignificant kid in John's gospel when he gave six fish sandwiches. And people didn't think that was much. It wasn't going to do much. But in God's hands, he multiplies it. And I think that if our, your viewers were just to realize that you put everything in God's hands, he's going to use it. And I'm surprised because it really started off as a joke, this whole <laughs> cooking thing. It really did. Um, after September the 11th, 2001, I was supposed to go to France with some priests on a pilgrimage, but all the flights were canceled. And so instead, we went on a retreat. And while we were there, we just needed comfort, some comfort food. And I like to cook. So one priest said, I wish I had a video camera just so that we could watch you cook. You could talk about food. You could talk about faith and family, f fun. And I just looked at him. I said, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. You know, I mean, a cooking priest and a few priests got wind of the story. And then when I moved to a new parish, um, I met a producer just by chance. And when I asked him in the sacristy, so what do you do for a living, Tim? Watkins, owner of Renegade Productions, he said, well, I produce TV shows and commercials. Another priest who was in on the joke said, well, have I got an idea for you. <laughs> and so we told him about Grace Before Meals and just months and months of talking about it, they decided to put a, um, a pilot together. We put it on the web. And then, my gosh, everyone just started going to the website mm -hmm. to see this crazy priest cook up a pretty tasty meal. And, and it's grown from the website to a weekly blast. So if your people want to hear more about this, you can just subscribe at gracebeforemeals.com. Then now the web shows. And just recently, I'm very proud to say, 
Food Network called me to do a show with me, and in the middle of the show, Bobby Flay, no, one of the really? Iron Chef, comes in and he challenges me to a throwdown. A throwdown. A throwdown. I mean, I, I just looked at Food Network cameras. I said, I can't believe you just lied to a priest. Because <laughs> <You know, laughs> we just thought there was going to be a show about Grace Before Meals, yeah. and it became something even better. It became a real competition between... What was it like? Standing next to... Well, it was... It kind of freaked me out, to be perfectly yeah. honest with you. I was talking about my dry ingredients for my fajitas, and all of a sudden the producer's pointing in the direction of Bobby Flay, and he's standing there with his arms crossed, and he said, Hi, Father Leo, you're making up some fajitas, and I've made a couple in my day, which is really an understatement because he's Southwest flavors all the way. Okay. And he says, I'd love to challenge you to a throwdown. And uh, I can't remember what I said, but it, had, it was something like, you know, with God as my witness, I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> but actually, I was. <laughs> Were you stressed out at all? Or? Uh, no. You know, the web shows have been great practice for national TV. Um, but at the same time, standing next to him was intimidating. Mm -hmm. But he, I think that's one thing great about greatness. It doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. In fact, Bobby Flay brought the best out in me. And we actually do a series of food competitions. And we talk about how competition is supposed to bring the best out in people. And unfortunately, in the sports world, we sometimes hear the worst sure. come out mm -hmm. of people. And what, what that did was it brought the best out of me. And, uh, and I threw down some pretty good fajitas. But you can't tell it. us, right? You can't I, tell I us. I can't tell you. When's it going to air? Uh, it'll air, God willing, sometime in August or September. I think if people go to my website, they'll see these countdown photos and stuff. But it's kind of uh, exciting. Wow, it won't be as exciting as the shoots we do with you, though, today. Absolutely not, especially if Father Reed is going yeah, to have, have some competition with my Yeah, food. we'll have Father <laughs> Reed coming in there for the throwdown, <laughs> which will be very good. But it's, it, it is exciting, though. And So you see this as a ministry, then? Oh, yes. I think, as a priest, everything I do is a ministry. Just walking through the airports with collar on, that's a form of ministry. And, and this is truly an extension of what a parish priest does. He gathers families around the table. And it really kind of started as an idea when families would say, Father, we'd love to have you over for dinner, mm -hmm. which was basically, you know, Father, that's code word for, mm -hmm. we got to talk to you about something a little more <laughs> privately. Sure. And what better place to do that than around the dinner table? Mm -hmm. I get to ask you a question. I met you first at the Catholic New Media Convention last year, the yes. first. And I know that you gave a great address, keynote address at that, loved it. And you speak all over the country on many different topics. Can I just ask you, and this is kind of a, a crazy question, but I think an important one. What do you feel is the state of the church in this country right now? It's a young church. I know you interact with a lot of young people. How is the Catholic Church in America? I am so glad you asked because not too many people would ask and what you see on the media is not good and so what I'm trying to do is show the positive things because the fact is our Catholic faith is in an incredible position right now to grow and to really be um, a source of evangelization for the world and I've not just traveled the country but the world sure. and, and it is not only young it is a hungry young church they are hungry for what you and all the other Catholic networks are trying to do is feed them the faith not leftover rehashes of just things of force feeding, but, but really try to be creative and innovative in the ways we teach it because they are so hungry. I've seen young people, and one, on the shoot, for example, one of the uh, guys said to me, Father, when we knew that we were coming out to see you, I was so excited because I saw you on another Catholic network. And I went, really? You watch that? <laughs> and he had long black yeah. dyed hair, black fingernails, black eyeliner. Here's a good kid who looked very goth and he was hungering for the faith and I talked to him and his girlfriend about chastity and they were like yes we're all about it so they're out there looking for the church to take leadership well, that's and, great news and they're asking you know what they're asking hard questions but they're good questions and I think that leads to them learning more about their faith and the more you learn about the faith the more you love your faith and one of the things that we don't do in a very highly communicative world is we don't talk to one another anymore. We're texting constantly right. and what I'm trying to do is make sure that families get a chance to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Ask the questions, especially around the dinner table. Well, one of the things we like to do is try to educate people by having a riddle called Catholic Treasure. So let's hear that riddle again, Father. Ah. We'll see if Father Leo I think I have it. Can oh, get really? it. Okay. I think. Let's see what it is. Let me just repeat it one more time. Its walls are not like any other, but within a process of discovery, the call that's felt is proven true to prepare 
for the grace of ministry. So you think you got it, Father. I think I have Father it. Father Leo, what's in the Catholic treasure box today? I think it's about seminary. Interesting you say that because I happen to have a picture ah, of Mount St. Mary's Seminary right here. In the seminary, men who feel a call to priestly ministry discern, or may I, maybe I should say discover, the validity of that call. The process wow. of discovery and preparation is generally divided into human, spiritual, intellectual, and pastoral components. Seminarians, as they are called in the seminary, deepen their awareness of God's call and the challenges of the priesthood, and they prepare to find out whether the church is indeed calling them. They study the Word of God. They study the tradition of the church, sacred scripture, all in preparation for the pastoral ministry. And there you have it, today's Catholic treasure, the seminary, and on the back, the pontifical North oh. American <laughs> College on the geniculum There's my milk. bedroom. And there's <laughs> my bedroom. Leo's bedroom. And, my, and mine was right there, too. I kind of feel left out here with all of this. Hey, one, we only have a minute 30, but sure. really quick. What is your ultimate goal with this? What's your vision? My ultimate goal is to get all of the families to spend time together around their table, leave room for God at their dinner table, and then come back together as a universal family at least every Sabbath. I think that's a great, great goal to have. Hey, Father, thank you so much oh, for joining us pleasure. today. Thank you. And the work hasn't done because when this show's over, we're going to do more. We're going to cook. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for joining us today on This Is The Day. We hope you've enjoyed the program. And know that all of you out there are always in our thoughts and prayers. We appreciate your affirmation and support. And may Almighty God continue to bless each one of you today and throughout the course of this week. God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you so much for joining Jay, Kevin, and our wonderful guest, Father Leo, here in the Catholic TV living room. We love coming into yours. Until next time, everyone, have a great day. God bless.